ഹലോ എവറി വൺ വെൽക്കം യു ഓൾ ടു ദ പ്രസൻറ്റേഷൻ ടൈറ്റിൽഡ് എ എൽ എൻ അൾട്രാ തിൻ ചിപ്സ് ബേസ്ഡ് ഫ്ലെക്സിബിൾ പീസ് ഇലക്ട്രിക് ടാക്ടൈൽ സെൻസർ ദ ഓത്തേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് മൈ സെൽഫ് യോഗീൻ കുമരേശൻ സിഹോങ് മോ ഡയൽ ആൻഡ് ശക്തി വേവ് ആൻഡ് പ്രൊഫസർ ദയ വി ഓൾ ഓർ ഫ്രം ബെൻഡബിൾ ഇലക്ട്രോണിക്സ് ആൻഡ് സെൻസിങ് ടെക്നോളജീസ് ഗ്രൂപ്പ് സ്കൂൾ ഓഫ് എഞ്ചിനീയറിംഗ് യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി ഓഫ് ഗ്ലാസ്കോ ടുഡേ ഇൻ ദിസ് പ്രസൻറ്റേഷൻ ദീസ് ആർ ഓൾ ദ ഔട്ട്ലൈൻ ദ ടൈം ഗോയിങ് ടു ഡിസ്കസ് firstly the overview of thinning technique fabrication process results and conclusion in overview about silicon electronics why silicon this is because silicon is most common element in universe second most abundant in earth's crust most of the commercialized semiconductor industry prefer silicon because it is more stable with the environment considering its electrical property silicon can be tuned by introducing suitable dopant at certain temperature making it more suitable material for cmos technology used in modern electronics such as cell phone computer tv and so on however silicon at its bulk form is not flexible to make it more flexible thinning techniques are used the advantage of thinning the bulk silicon wafer is high performance flexible cmos compatible devices are achievable stable electrical response and a different mechanical property is achievable in addition to this one considering the mohr's law where the transistor size will be decreased every 2 years however it is reaching its limit thereby like this utc and vertical stacking will help to enable high density packaging finally this thinning is also used to reduce the power loss in cmos based circuits so to achieve this ultra thin chip based flexible electronics two different approaches are used device lost approach and device first approach in device lost approach commercialized thin silicon wafer will be purchased and the device will be fabricated on top of the commercialized thin wafer however fabricating on thin wafer on handling will be very difficult the second approach is device first up approach in device first approach on the rigid wafer the device will be fabricated using cmos compatible fabrication process after that it will be thinned using different techniques layer transfer etching and grinding here i am going to discuss about the grinding technique namely back side lapping like thinning the back side of the wafer because this is a very simple process it's not time consuming cost effective and so on so in the coming presentation i will be showing the fabrication process of cmos compatible piezoelectric pressure sensor fabrication and then its thinning finally the results will be discussed so here in this slide the fabrication scheme of cmos compatible piezoelectric pressure sensor is given we used commercialized eln silicon wafer this eln the positive silicon wafer it consists of a three layer 500 nanometer thick eln layer a conductive layer and then 500 micrometer thick silicon wafer we deposit a titanium and gold directly onto the eln layer through hard mask using e beam evaporator the thickness of the titanium is 10 nanometer and the thickness of the gold is 100 nanometer titanium is used to enhance the adhesion of gold to the eln layer so figure 3 it shows uh, it shows the um, photographic image of fabricated device and its cross sectional image which clearly shows the pressure sensitive eln layer is embedded between the top two electrodes to make it flexible we adapted the thinning technique lapping thinning using lapping 
we spin coated PMMA on top of the device layer. The purpose of the PMMA layer is twofold. Firstly, this PMMA layer will help to protect the device while thinning. And secondly, it facilitates easy separation of the thinned wafer from after thinning process. We attached this PMMA coated piezoelectric pressure sensor onto the glass sample holder through wax. This wax will come in direct contact to the PMMA layer, thereby the back side of the silicon wafer will be exposed for thinning or grinding. So during later on, it will be transferred to the vacuum jig and to the thinning plate. During thinning process, we introduced AL2O3 slurry. We used three micrometer diameter AL2O3 slurry and 12 micrometer AL2O3 slurry. In the initial time from 500 micrometer, we reached 100 micrometer using 12 micrometer slurry. And from two, from 100 micrometer, we thin it down to, we etched the back side and thin it down to final thickness of 35 micrometer using three micrometer slurry. By this way, ultra thin piezoelectric pressure sensor was achieved. We transferred it to flexible polyamide substrate and the external connections were taken out. The photographic image is given in the figure five. From here on, I will discuss about the results. So the ACM image given in the left, it shows the bulk wafer and the UTC. The thickness of the bulk wafer and the thickness of the UTC is clearly shown here. So we reduce the thickness from 500, 500 micrometer, we bring it down to 35 micrometer. So to understand whether this thinning process affected the interface quality of device or the device performance, we measured the capacitance of the, of the fabricated device before and after thinning. So from the result, we, we came to know in both the cases, the capacitance value is approximately 2.5 nanofarad. It's almost the same. This proves that before and after thinning, the interface or ALN quality is not decreased. So thinning process is not degrading the performance. Further, the piezoelectric pressure sensor was characterized by applying a continuous dynamic pressure at two different frequencies, 0 0.5 Hertz and 0 0.1 Hertz. Under external pressure, positive voltage spike was observed due to the generation of piezoelectric potential, piezo potential, and eventually it reaches to equilibrium. And once the pressure is released, negative spike was observed alternatively. So under the same trend was maintained before thinning and after thinning in both the cases at two different frequencies. In addition to this one, the flexibility of UTC was also examined, evaluated. We placed the ultra thin chip onto the 40 millimeter bending radius tool, bending tool. And we measured like uh, measured the dynamic pressure sensor characteristics before and after bending, and we found almost both are giving the same trend, with slight decrease in the performance of the piezoelectric pressure sensor. So here we are able to achieve high performance, flexible, CMOS compatible piezoelectric pressure sensor. To conclude my presentation, here the lapping was used to thin the CMOS compatible piezoelectric pressure sensor. After thinning, the capacitance of ALN based device is not varied. That proves the interface between the metal and dielectric is not affected during thinning process. Piezoelectric pressure sensor demonstrated similar trend before and after thinning. This work is carried out as a preliminary step.
towards the realization of high performance flexible post fit for tactile sensor application finally i would like to thank our school university of glasgow our fabrication center james watt nano fabrication center where the metal deposition and the fabrication taken place and i like to thank the funding agencies european commissions through future emerging technology project ph coding and epsrc funding finally i would like to thank all the group members and these are all the group members for more details regarding our group and work please visit us using the given link below or the social page social group page thank you very much for your time and attention if you have any questions yeah please